Welcome back to the lectures on the principles of quantum mechanics. The series of lectures uh, is being offered to you through the national program on technology enhanced learning NPTEL and uh, my name is Mangala Sundar Krishnan. I am a professor of uh, chemistry in the department of chemistry uh, Indian Institute of Technology Madras. In the series we have been looking at uh, in the first part of the series, we have been uh, revised, we have been looking at some of the elementary mathematical uh, aspects related to the Schrodinger equation and also basic quantum mechanics. And in that uh, context, in the last lecture, we looked at first order differential equations. So, this lecture is purely a lecture for solving problems, some simple problems on first order differential equations. Therefore, uh, I shall state the problems for those of you who want to do the solutions by themselves and not listen to the lecture. You can always refer to the lecture for details uh, when you need to, but you can skip this lecture and go to the next one for uh, some details on the second order differential equations and uh, the power series method for solving mathematical problems in quantum mechanics. So, this is more like a hand holding or a problem solving lecture and I shall state a few problems that uh, we want to consider in this uh, hour. We will split this into two 20, 25 minute sessions, so that you can uh, have a break at some convenient point that I have decided that that is a convenient point. The first set of problems, very elementary to slightly more involved. Let me write a simple differential equation dy by dx minus 10 y is equal to 0 and another problem dy by dx minus say 5 y is equal to 6. These are given as problems for the background quiz on the website. So, they are not but any different from what is already there. And the third that we will look at in this group is dy by dt minus y by t is equal to 0. Okay. So, there are three, yeah, these three problems first let us look at that. Obviously, these are trivial. I think you must know that this is uh, a simple exponential solution. So, you can write that dy by uh, y is equal to minus 10 dx, which gives you immediately y of x is equal to a e to the dy by dx is plus 10 x, I am sorry. Okay. So, it gives you uh, a e to the 10 x where a is the arbitrary constant. So, one condition will tell us what the value of a is. That condition can be on the y or on the y prime or whatever it is at a particular value of x. So, there is one arbitrary constant since it is a first order differential equation. The second problem dy by dt dx sorry dy by second problem dy by dx minus 5y is equal to 6 uh, is uh, amenable by a simple method of finding this as a single function, which you can immediately see that it is d by d x of e to the minus 5 x y of x. The differential of this will give you this part the on the left hand side. And since you have multiplied uh, the uh, whole equation by e to the minus 5 x in getting this form, this is 6 
e to the minus 5 x. Okay. All that I said was multiply by e to the minus 5 x and that gives you this. Okay. So, the solution would be uh, y of x is equal to e to the plus 5 x integral uh, e to the minus 5 x dx 6 times and the answer that you would get is y of x is equal to minus 6 by 5 plus a constant times e to the 5 x, okay. which if you substitute in the differential equation, you will get the equation back. Okay. By five, yeah. The third problem dy by dt minus y by t is equal to 0 is a separable problem because it is dy by y is equal to dt by t and then integration gives you uh, a constant. So, you will get y is equal to a t. It is essentially l n y is equal to l n t plus c. So, it is a constant, it is a uh, straight line in t. Okay. So, this is the first set of problems. Uh, Let us look at a slightly more involved set of problems involving uh, the other methods. Let us look at um, a, the other set being dy by dx is equal to x square plus y square by x y solve for y. Second problem is dy by dx is equal to y by x plus square root of xy and uh, one more dy by dx is equal to 2 plus y e to the xy by to y minus x e to the x y. So, in all these three cases solve for y. So, let us take the first one. This you re recognize is a homogeneous of order 2 of degree 2. The equation dy by dx is equal to x square plus y square by x y. Okay. Therefore, the standard method that we learnt in the last lecture is that let y by x be u and y is equal to u of x. dy by dx is given by u plus x du by dx. Then you have dy by dx given as u plus x du by dx is equal to dividing by x square we get 1 plus uh, u square because it is y by x whole square and then you get uh, y by x which is u and so x du by dx is 1 plus u square by u minus u which is uh, 1 minus u square. So, you get 1 by u. Therefore, the solution is x d u by d x is equal to 1 by u or u d u is equal to d x by x integrate to get u square by 2 is equal to l n x plus c and uh, 
u itself is y square by x square. Therefore, you have the final answer y of x is equal to square root of 2 x square ln x plus uh, c prime c x square. That should be a 2 perhaps and uh, u square by 2. So, that should be a 2 here also. If you have an initial condition or if you have a condition for y given the value of x, you can obtain the value of the constant c is a constant. The second, this is the first of the three problems, yes. So, the second one dy by dx is equal to y by x plus square root of x y. This also has the same form, it is a homogeneous uh, and the degree is 1. Therefore, immediately you can write u plus uh, x du by dx is equal to y by x which is u and then you have uh, by 1 plus root u or x du by dx is equal to minus let us say u which you have to cancel. So, it is minus u root u by 1 plus root u. Therefore, the differential equation is minus d u by u root u minus d u by u is equal to d x by x and the answer turns out to be you can solve this immediately. This is a square root of u, the answer is uh, uh, 2 by root u for this and the answer here is minus ln u this is equal to ln x plus c giving you the answer that 2 root x by y is equal to ln y plus c, c a constant. Okay. Third problem, uh, because the way it looks like dy by dx with uh, it appears non-linear y e to the x y to y minus x e to the x y. So, we try this by writing it as uh, m d x plus n d y is equal to 0 and see if uh, dou m by dou y is equal to dou n by dou x. In which case, we have a function of x and y which is a constant as a solution. Okay. So, if you rewrite this uh, differential equation, you have 2y minus x e to the x y dy plus minus 2 minus y e to the x y d x is equal to 0. So, this is uh, assuming this to be n and this to be m. Let us look at the derivatives. This is d y. So, I have to look at dou n by dou x and that is the partial derivative with respect to x here which will give me minus e to the x y minus x y e to the x y. Since differentiating this only with respect to x only okay. 
and dou m by dou y you look at the derivative here is minus e to the x y minus the derivative of the exponential with respect to y is x y e to the x y and therefore, we have this equation dou n by dou x is equal to dou m by dou y and therefore, there is a function f of x of y which is a constant such that d f is dou f by dou x given y d x plus dou f by dou y given x constant d y and that is 0 and this is your m, this is your n and all that we did was dou squared f by dou y dou x is equal to dou squared f by dou x dou y for well behaved functions. Okay. That is what we used. Therefore, the immediately we know that uh, integral m d x with respect to x will give you the integral of minus 2 minus y e to the x y d x only and the answer will be not a constant, but any function of any arbitrary function of y because we are only integrating with respect to x. So, the answer we can write as minus 2 x minus e to the x y plus a function of y plus other constants, but that we do not want to include right now. And how do we determine this? We have to find out what n d y gives, which will give you a function of y and an arbitrary function of x. You have to match these two in order to get the final answer. So, the n d y integral is integral 2 y minus x e to the x y d y which is given as y squared minus e to the x y plus g of x. Now, you can see that here is one solution and here is the other solution and the function f of x y is the correct combination of these two such that f of x y satisfies the above equation. So, you can see that there is a y squared here and uh, which is the h of y and e to the minus x y is common to both of them. There is a g of x which is minus 2 x and therefore, the answer is f of x y is y squared minus e to the x y e raised to x y minus 2 x and of course, any arbitrary constant to that because you can always add a constant here, you can always add a constant here and then uh, well make it c double prime some arbitrary constant. So, the solution should be y squared minus e x raised to x y minus 2 x plus a constant. So, this is uh, one way of solving the differential equation. Okay. So, let me complete this exercise with one more set of problems namely uh, verifying the integration integrating factor for these exact equations. Question given is y d x minus x d y and uh, the factor minus 1 by x square. Is it 
and integrating factor i f. You can see that if this is m dx and m dy, you can see that dou m by dou y is 1, dou n by dou x is minus 1 and therefore, you see that this is not equal to each other, uh, I mean they are not equal to one, one other and therefore, you see that this is not an exact equation. However, if we multiply uh, this equation by the, if you multiply this quantity by minus 1 by x square, you have minus y by x square dx minus plus 1 by x dy. Then you can see that this is a perfect differential. Therefore, if you have an equation like this is equal to 0, then what you do is you multiply this equation by minus 1 by x square and then make this into a perfect differential and solve this. This is easy to verify because if this is m and this is n, dou m by dou x is dou y, I am sorry, dou y is minus 1 by x square and dou n by dou x is again minus 1 by x square. So, that is that is the integrating factor. Likewise, uh, there are two other problems. Is 1 by x y an integrating factor for the quantity y dx plus x dy. Well, actually y dx plus x dy itself is a perfect differential, it is d of x y. Therefore, dividing it by x y obviously will make it an integrating factor anyway. So, again make it perfect differential. So, we do not need it, but it is definitely an integrating factor for this problem, because what you have is 1 by x dx plus 1 by y dy and you see that the derivatives in both cases will be 0, which is obvious, because when you divide x y by x y you have a constant. Therefore, the derivative of a constant is 0. So, if f of x y is x y, then you can see immediately d f is given by this quantity. Okay. However, if you have a minus sign as you have here, you do need an integrating factor. Okay. So, these are some simple examples of the uh, first order differential equations. There are many, many such uh, examples and I probably will give uh, an assignment on the website plus some handwritten solutions of those. So, those of you who want to uh, get familiar with a little bit more of these operational methods of elementary first order differential equations, please refer to the NPTEL website under my course, the principles of quantum chemistry or quantum mechanics. Okay. You can search for my uh, name and you will see the courses uh, that are there on the website. So, let me stop this part of today's lecture here, have a break and then what we would do is to start with elementary second order differential equations and then continue that with some uh, simple examples in the next lecture. So, that the three lectures, the one, uh, the, the preceding one, this one and the next one hour lecture, one and a half hours whatever together will form an elementary introduction to differential equations and solution for those who want to study quantum chemistry and whose mathematical backgrounds are not uh, I mean formally well defined in the areas of mathematics. However, if you want to learn these things more thoroughly, it is important for you to go back to the books and read some of the proofs, the theorems and the existence, uniqueness of these solutions etcetera 
a lot of this is also done in the NPTEL program under the mathematics and under the physics department. This is a hands on help to the chemistry graduate and undergraduate students who would uh, come across quantum mechanics for the first time and are often disturbed by the fact that they have to solve uh, somewhat difficult differential equations and then never use them in practice later on because almost all the learning uh, methods and the practice uh, is uh, computational and uh, numerical. However, it is important to appreciate some of the elementary solutions and particularly exact solutions of quantum mechanical problems. So, let me stop here, we will continue this after a break. Uh, welcome back. We shall continue this with the second order differential equations. Again, uh, we will only do what is minimally needed to take us through the solutions of uh, the quantum mechanical problems of harmonic oscillator and the hydrogen atom. So, most of you are familiar with these elementary differential equations, second order d square by d x square y plus some constant k squared y of x is equal to 0 or d square y by d x square minus k squared y is equal to 0. Well, the sign difference is not uh, that simple, but uh, it leads to basically different uh, solutions. I mean different, the solutions are of completely different nature. This gives you oscillatory solution and this gives decaying, growing solutions. So, exponentials both, but uh, very different nature. Okay. Then the other types of second order differential equations, the general a linear second order differential equation d square y by d x square plus a function p of x d y by d x plus another function q of x y is equal to 0. This is homogeneous. linear second order d. And uh, the allied inhomogeneous equation d square y by d x square plus some function p of x d y by d x plus q of x y is equal to g of x in homogeneous or non homogeneous. Let us write this as non homogeneous. Okay. Equations. When p and q are constants and p q or p q or constants, then there are simple methods for solving them. When p and q are not constants, but functions and also sometimes a function preceding the second derivative itself. For example, well uh, some L of x d squared y by d x squared plus p of x d y by d x plus q of x y is equal to some other uh, function g of x. We have far more uh, general and uh, much more detailed methods of solving them. Uh, one way is to look at this L x by uh, not looking at it, but by bringing it as a divisor but then 
there could be problems if L of x goes to 0 at some particular value of x which is in the domain of the solution of the equation and those things are called the singular points and solutions of differential equations with singular points is one of the most beautiful and uh, most thoroughly studied uh, branches of mathematics and of, a lot of that is also useful in quantum physics and uh, in of course the entire uh, uh, branch of physics and engineering. We will not do any of those things at the moment, I mean you can take them up later, uh, but probably we will do a little bit of these and then proceed directly to what is known as uh, an infinite series method or power series method for solving the differential equations, particularly second order differential equations. Okay. First simple solutions d square y by dx square plus k squared y is equal to 0. Okay. It should be immediately obvious that y of x uh, has the solution a cos k x plus b sin k x. Twice differentiating this you will get this, you will get that equation. Okay. Another way of writing the solution is instead of a cos k x to write this as e to the i k x plus e to the minus i k x by 2 plus b by 2 i e to the i k x minus e to the minus i k x which gives you two new constants c exponential i k x plus d exponential minus i k x. So, this is the complex representation for the solutions to the differential except that that c and d now can be complex constants or real constants. You can see immediately b by 2 i plus a by 2 or minus whatever is defined by c and d. So, it is possible to write this. This is an important equation that we will see in a particle in a box and particle in a 2D box and so on. So, we will have to keep this in mind. Okay. Uh, we will see this again. Another uh, basic differential equation is d square y by dx square minus k squared y is equal to 0 and this has clearly only one solution y of x is equal to a e to the k x some arbitrary constant b e to the minus k x. Okay. Differentiating this twice you will get k squared and you will also get minus k whole square. So, you will get exactly this equation, but this is exponential growth and exponential decay. This is not oscillatory as you have in the previous case, okay, as you have in this case. Okay. So, the sign is quite important and the fact is that k square is uh, real. If k square is imaginary, obviously this will become negative and so you have uh, solutions. If k is imaginary, obviously this is e to the i some real number and the solution goes back to this. Okay. Elementary. Now, the type of equations that we will study for in this course are the following equations. Okay. One Legendre differential equation. of order alpha and this is a special equation solved by obviously the legendary Legendre 1 minus x square d square y by d x square minus 2 x dy by dx plus alpha into alpha plus 1 y is equal to 0. 
uh, in this course I will not solve this equation, but it is important in physics and in mathematics it is known as Bessel's equation of order n given by x square d square y by d x square plus x d y by d x plus x square minus n square y is equal to 0. Please note that it is multiplied by the second derivative is multiplied by x square. Therefore, x is equal to 0 is a singularity and one has to be careful about writing the solutions of this or solving this equation. We will not do this in this course, but it is important to remember that it is an extremely important equation in physics and mathematics. In this course, we will see this equation log air differential equation for the solution of the radial part of hydrogen atom uh, electron problem. The log air equation is given by x square d square y by d x square plus 1 minus x d y by d x plus alpha y is equal to 0 and associated log air differential equation x square d square y by d x square plus 1 plus k minus x where k is non-zero d y by d x plus alpha y is equal to 0. And lastly, oh, there are two more equations, sorry, the Hermite's differential equation d squared y by d x square minus 2 x d y by d x plus 2 alpha y is equal to 0. Okay. So, this we will solve explicitly in this course, this we will solve explicitly and also the Legendre, there is also an associated Legendre equation, associated given by one minus x square d square y by d x square minus two x d y by d x plus alpha into alpha minus alpha plus 1 minus m square y is equal to 0. Okay. So, we shall solve these types of equations uh, in detail later on, but let us look at simple theory of second order differential equation. Simple, well simple examples I would not call it theory simple examples for second order differential equation. If we consider homogeneous equations with constant coefficients, is not easy to solve.
meaning the equation a d square y by d x square plus b d y by d x plus c is equal to 0 homogeneous constant coefficients a b c constant. Okay. Then uh, the and a is not equal to 0. So, if you have merely d square y by d x square a is equal to 1 that is all okay. otherwise any number that goes with it. Then it is easy to solve this equation by having this operator defined d as d by d x and the operator d square as d square by d x squared and you can see that a function which does not change through differentiation to any order is an exponential function. Therefore, we might propose as a simple solution to this differential equation an exponential function and then if we substitute that exponential function with some unknown constants in there, we can probably transform this equation into a linear equation not a linear differential equation in terms of those coefficients and then determine this coefficients. And since you have second derivative here and first derivative here when you take the derivative of exponentials with coefficients the most you will get are the powers of the second powers of the coefficient and the first power of the coefficient and so on. So, this will turn out to be a simple quadratic equation in terms of those coefficients and quadratic equations have analytic solutions in terms of the roots of the uh, quadratic equations. So, it is very easy and very quick to uh, understand the solutions as to why they are uh, important. So, if I have an equation like a y double prime as I have written down b y prime plus c is equal c y is equal to 0 and if I propose a solution y is equal to a constant times an exponential say uh, k x. We could choose minus k, but it does not matter because when you solve for uh, the y using this form you will get different values for k. So, if you do that dy by dx is k y and d square y by dx square is k squared y and so you will immediately get the equation a k squared plus b k plus c times y is equal to 0 and since y of x is not 0 everywhere arbitrarily it is non 0 you have the quantity a k square plus b k plus c is equal to 0 and this gives you the solution for k as minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4 a c by 2 a. So, you get two values for k, k which you can call it as k 1 and k 2. k 1 is obviously one of the roots minus b plus square root of b square minus 4 a c by 2 a and k 2 is minus b minus square root of b square minus 4 a c by 2 a and given these two roots the general solution for the differential equation will be a e to the is equal to a e to the let me just uh, get this right e to the k 1 x plus b e to the k 2 of x okay, where k 1 and k 2 are given by this. So, that becomes the solution of the differential equation. So, when you have constant coefficients for a second order differential equation it is nothing other than a simple quadratic form. But interesting thing is when k 1 and k 2 are equal or when k 1 and k 2 are not real, but complex then you have to worry about some special forms. If k 1 and k 2 are uh, not equal to each other real or uh, complex the solution is easy to write down. Okay. So, uh, the best would be to illustrate this using a simple example. 
So, let me uh, take an example for solving uh, such an equation. The examples are there in the assignments uh, in the website, but let me see if I have one here. Yeah, so let us take uh, two examples and uh, we will illustrate the differences between them. For example, one problem that we have is y double prime minus 4 y prime minus 5 y is equal to 0. Okay. You have just seen that this with the substitution y is equal to a e to the k x, this essentially goes down to k squared minus 4 k minus 5 is equal to 0, which is easily factored into k minus 5 times k plus 1 is equal to 0. Therefore, k is equal to minus 5, k is equal to 5 or minus 1. I mean that is a quadratic equation solution anyway. So, you have immediately the solution of the differential equation is y of x is a e to the 5 x plus b e to the minus x. Easy. Real different values for k. Now, an interesting uh, variation of this would be to solve this differential equation y double prime minus 4 y prime instead of minus 5, let us put plus 5 y is equal to 0. Then if you factorize this, what you would get is k squared minus 4 k plus 5 is equal to 0 and this uh, the roots have to be solved uh, through this uh, discriminant form. So, you will get k is equal to 2 plus or minus 2 i b minus b plus or minus b square uh, square root of b square minus 4 a c all those things. Okay. You get 2 roots. Therefore, you have the solution y of x is equal to a e to the 2 plus 2i of x and b e to the 2 minus 2i of x, which you can rewrite as e raised to 2x a e to the 2i of x plus b e to the minus 2i of x. And this you know is cos 2x plus i sin 2x and this is cos 2x minus i sin 2x and therefore, the solution y of x becomes e raised to 2x. You collect all the cosine terms and the sine terms. You have complex coefficients c is equal to times cos 2x plus b times sin 2x and you know that c is uh, a plus b and uh, d is i times a minus b. i i a plus minus i b that is what you have here. Okay. But you have an oscillatory term with the growing exponential. That is because the leading term or uh, the real part is positive. If the real part is negative, you will have a decaying exponential, but oscillatory. Okay. So, this is what happens if the coefficients k 1 and k 2 are imaginary or complex. What happens if they are both the same? For example, y double prime minus 4 y prime plus 4 y is equal to 0 which when you factor out it is k square minus 4 k plus uh, 4 is equal to 0 or it is k minus 2 square. Therefore, k is equal to 2 is the only solution is the only answer. Does that mean that y of x is equal to a e to the 2 x is the only solution? No. Does that mean? No, because it is a second order differential equation. We expect two general solutions 
or general solutions with two arbitrary constants and therefore, there is another form that uh, we need to worry about to uh, in instead of explaining why that form is let me give you that particular uh, form namely we write this y of x as a e to the 2 x plus a general form b times x e to the 2 x that it will turn out to be only x and not x square or x cube etcetera you can easily see that, but if we have x to the e to the 2 x also will be a solution to this equation. So, let me just do this in a slightly different way why it is x ok. That is a sorry let us write this uh, y double prime minus 4 y prime plus 4 is equal to 0. We will write this as d minus 2 introducing the notation that I put in in the very beginning d f 1 minus 2 f 1 is equal to 0 where f 1 is a solution is a solution. So, we have already found out f 1 to be a e to the 2 x. So, if there is another solution f 2, what we need to do is to try out f 2 is equal to g of x e raised to 2 x. We will keep that because exponential is always there for all these second order constant coefficients uh, uh, differential equations, but we need to now determine the arbitrary function g of x and in a minute in a few minutes you will find out that this is nothing other than x. Okay. So, let us uh, look at this. If f 2 is a solution then d by d x sorry let me use the operator d okay. d minus 2 times d f 2 minus 2 f 2 is equal to 0 because that is the differential equation d squared minus 4 d plus 4 f 2 is equal to 0 which is factored into these operator forms. Now, the derivative if you substitute for d f 2 using the g of x e raised to 2 x what you will have is d by d x minus 2 okay, d g by d x e to the 2 x is equal to 0 okay. or d squared g by d x squared to d g by d x of e to the 2 x minus 2 d g by d x of e to the 2 x is equal to 0 and therefore, what you have is d square g by d x square times e to the 2 x is equal to 0 because this 2 will cancel with this 2. I have done only differentiate this whole thing using d by d x this one. So, what you have is d square g by d x square is a con is equal to 0 which means uh, d g by d x is a constant or g is a constant times x. So, you see that it comes out immediately when you substitute a general form, uh, a general form f of x this is the general form that we used sorry. The, the general form that we used was f 2 of x g of x. If you substitute that in the differential equation, you immediately get this answer. Okay. Therefore, the general solution for the differential equation is 
one is the a e raised to 2 x, the other is the x e raised to 2 x and this is the form for the homogeneous uh, differential equation with constant coefficients such that you get a perfect square for the, the differential forms like this. So, there are uh, many tricks uh, of the trade here and the job of a theoretician is of course, to uh, keep as one of my uh, postdoctoral uh, colleagues, senior colleagues when I was under training, uh, when I was associated with him kept on telling that you have to collect the tools and uh, your toolbox should keep on piling up mathematical techniques for theoreticians. Uh, one should continue to to learn and keep them ready and use the necessary ones. So, differential equations there are many methods. The homogeneous linear second order differential equation has some very simple solutions as we have seen. In the next lecture, I will take this a little bit further and talk about the general solutions for the differential equations with the coefficients uh, uh, which are not constants, but functions like the p and the q that we wrote down and then uh, probably given some time we will also look at one important method for chemists namely an infinite series representation of the solution and then solving the differential equations using an infinite series. We will assume the infinite series to be convergent all those details will not be discussed. We will come back to the differential equations in the next lecture until then. Thank you very much.